Yo, what's poppin' my people? It's your boy CTG, and I'm back at you guys with another banger of a UFC 5 video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to properly use the new alter ego Tony Ferguson. So for those of you guys that didn't know, UFC 5 did drop alter egos for three fighters. Uh, Tony Ferguson, Nate Diaz, and Donald Cerrone. And I am gonna be showing you guys how to use all three of those fighters, with the first obviously being Tony Ferguson. Now... Part of my reason for making this video is because I I see a lot of people getting this uh, this kind of weird idea that Tony Ferguson is just meant for grappling, and he's he's really not. Uh, you can't just be going out and spamming takedowns with Tony Ferguson because right here, as you guys see, his takedowns are 88, so he's not going to be just going out and being a takedown monster. Uh, he does have good top control. He does have good bottom control. He does have, obviously, really good submissions, really good de submission defense, uh, 94 striking, 94 clinch, and 92 clinch control. So this pretty much lets you know that if you are going to be using him and trying to grapple with him, you're going to want to be doing it primarily out of the clinch. And this is very realistic. This is how Tony got a lot of his takedowns in real life as well, was inside the clinch. He wasn't known to just be shooting takedowns left and right. But I'm going to let the video play a little bit so that way we can check out all of his stats, not just his grappling stats. Uh, you see here, he has 100 cardio, which prime Tony Ferguson. For those of you guys that weren't around for prime Tony Ferguson, um, he did have a gas tank for days, man. He really, really did. The 98 chin, he had a granite chin up until, ironically, he faced Justin Gaethje. Um, 94 body health, 92 legs, 99 recovery, very realistic, and 92 cut susceptibility. So all of this is very, very realistic, very good stats. Everything that you would want him to have or that you would dream for a fighter in UFC 5 to have, he has right there. I'm going to let it play right here. So with the punch speed, it's not very fast, but he's not very fast in real life either. Um, even in his prime, he wasn't very quick. Um, he doesn't have the best punch power. The accuracy is pretty good. The blocking obviously is going to be really good. The head movement is pretty good. Now, right here is the, the determining factor for really what's going to make him very good on the feet. And that's the 96 footwork and the 96, 99 switch stance. Very, very nice and quick footwork on, uh, Tony Ferguson. And this is really what he had in real life too, when he was in his prime, which was around UFC 238 where he fought uh, Donald Cerrone. So the 89 takedown defense isn't great, but you know he has good ground stats, so he didn't worry about getting taken down. And then the kick power and the kick speed are, eh, they're all right. So let's go ahead, and we're going to get into this fight against, ironically, the man that kind of took Tony Ferguson out of his prime in Justin Gaethje. So right here, we're going to look at who we're fighting. Guy I've never fought before. Now, the first thing that I'm going to tell you is, although Tony Ferguson does have the high chin stat, you don't want to just be standing in front of somebody like Justin Gaethje or Charles Oliveira or Islam, because although he does have the high the high uh, chin stat and stuff like that, he's not the quickest. That punch speed is not very quick. So a lot of the time, if you're not careful, you're going to lose the the pocket battle and you're going to eat a high amount of damage and you don't really want that you don't i mean you don't want him to have to use all of those all of that chin stat and all of that uh all of that recovery you want to try to fight off at space so that way you can work the kicks you can work the spinning elbows you can work the combinations the good combinations that he does have uh so that would be my first recommendation if you're going to be using the alter ego uh tony ferguson so right here you see we're using a nice quick footwork and i see here that this justin gaethje actually switches into southpaw which is very very weird but it is what it is maybe he has a strategy that he's trying to implement i don't know but they're launching off that nice combo you see how i'm fainting a lot tony ferguson did that in real life too and he still does that a lot he faints quite a bit Right there, we're launching off the body kicks. 
And now you see right here, I'm taking my time. I'm not rushing into Justin Gaethje. I'm not. I'm taking my time. I'm picking my shots. I'm looking at what he's giving me, and I'm taking what he's giving me. So that way, it, once I take what he gives me, it's going to open up what I want because then he's going to have to start defending down low. And I want to be able to pop the front kick off. I want to be able to to uh, throw combinations up to the head. But in order for me to be able to do that, because of the lack of power that Tony Ferguson has, I have to take what he's going to give me, which right now is going to be the body kick or the leg kicks. So just keep that in mind. Tip for you. Take what your opponent is going to give you with Tony Ferguson when you're on the feet. Because if you don't and you try to force the issue, you're going to be made to pay. Antic pace early on to this one. Right here, just taking my time, working that leg kick. He tries to take out the leg. Beautiful leg kick land. Oh, now, Tony Ferguson, that. in real life, ironically, had issues with leg kicks, with eating leg kicks. Um, he still has an issue with eating calf kicks and stuff like that. That was kind of his Achilles heel. Um, but luckily, this guy isn't throwing leg kicks, so he's making a really big mistake with Justin Gaethje. He really, really is. is we're doing here? And I wouldn't expect oh, a lot of people to make this same mistake. They were still launching off that body kick. Nice calf kick in the straight. Well, see, we're playing off at space because Tony Ferguson does have a 76-inch reach. So we're trying to take advantage of it. Playing a little bit of footies, giving him different things to look at. Right there, nice jab, jab to the body, up to the lead hook. Ooh, caught him with a nice crispy clean two-piece. So just taking our time though. Getting the jab and the straight. Trying to get his timing down. Ooh, barely missed on that front kick. It was there. Nice knee to the body by him right there. Now you see how I'm switching? I'm switching stances. That you really need to, if you're going to be using Tony Ferguson, you need to be switching stances. You need to be comfortable with switching from southpaw to orthodox to southpaw. Like you need to be able to switch stance because that 99 switch stance is really going to come into play. Because, like I said, one of his one of his Achilles heels in real life was him getting leg kicked. And if you're going up against somebody like Justin Gaethje, they're not going to be making the same mistake as this guy. They're going to be chopping at that calf with the calf kick. So switching stances, giving your opponent different looks, keeping them on edge, and not allowing them to get comfortable with the patterns is very, very important with Tony Ferguson. It's going to set up high damage shots and high damage combinations to try to be able to finish opponents. So another tip that I have for you guys there. Use them all to really dominate and dictate the way that they the were chopping at that calf still. It's always fun to go in there and think you're going to have a great fight. But the moment you're Hopping off bash, that jab, pressuring. You start to realize I'm in with a man that's What different. Tony did in real that's life too. He was first. very, very good at pressuring well, people. He was kind of just nice drowning job. to be honest. It's pretty crazy because he did it to, to very, very good cardio fighters like RDA. RDA, he, he drowned RDA pretty much. Well, it's about as appropriate a nickname as we have in MMA. The highlight, Justin Gaethje, and he has... So here with a nice clean spin elbow. My opponent tried to answer, but missed. We're working the nice combinations. Ooh, but we got caught right there. That's not what we want. Nice calf kick by him, though. 15 seconds remain in the round. All right, we caught that kick. All right, and that's the end of the first round. Now, you see, we kept it patient. We picked. We, we took what he gave us and really just landed high damage shots. We leg kicked him. That's going to force him to switch stance. Obviously, he likes playing in southpaw. That's why he's using Justin Gaethje in southpaw, which I said at the beginning is really weird. But we're going to get him to fight in a stance that's very different and foreign to him, potentially. And we're starting to set up those kicks to the head, too. Because if he lowers that block down, eventually we're just going to throw a jab head kick. And bam, we might be able to land a heavy damaging shot. But we were able to work some combinations up to the head as well. 
So this is really how you want to be using Tony Ferguson on the feet. Not just going in trying to spam clinches or spamming takedowns. If you have the advantage on the feet, he can be useful on the feet as well. But if this Justin Gaethje wants to take us down, you know, we're ready for that as well. Right here, we're taking our time. We shoot for that single leg, but we actually missed. He clinches us up. We're going to put a little bit of pressure on him. Try to stay in the center of the octagon as much as possible. But he hits with a clean rear overhand into a jab straight. He's trying to start to find that rhythm. So we slow it back down. Playing a little bit of footies. That 96 footwork stat. That's where that comes into play, those footies. Popping that jab. Nice body rips. To a calf kick by us. Now, see, we got caught right there, and that lowered our chin help down pretty fast. So we got to still be careful. Nice calf kick. Caught him with three piece. Now you see what he's trying to do. He's starting to launch off that rear overhand. So we got to be aware of that. But a lot of people tend to try to combo off the rear overhands. They'll throw a rear overhand into an uppercut or a rear upper and from that rear uppercut into a hook. They try to combo off of that. So I threw that stationary combination that I caught him with right before I'm hitting him with this strike right here to kind of discourage that. And that's a tip that I have for you, too. You want to try to interrupt people. And this just isn't with Tony Ferguson. You want to try to use this with every single fighter. But if somebody's chucking overhands, you want to inter try to interrupt the combinations because they're very, very slow. And they're very readable. And once you start to interrupt them, people will stop trying to combo off of it. So tip for you guys. Right they're hitting with a nice ducking straight. Oh, caught him right there with a crispy, clean head kick. Now we're starting to put that pressure on like Tony Ferguson would do in real life. Not trying to take that back step. Through another spinning elbow. Faint in the straight. Caught him with another cleanly timed head kick. Knocked him down. We tried to jump into his guard, but unfortunately he got up before we could do so. Clinch him up. We tried to push him up against the cage, but he was striking back, so got a little worried right there. Ooh, but the nice counter elbow. Them elbows from Tony Ferguson are vicious, too, as long as we get that lead uppercut. Now, ironically, the uppercut that we just hit him with was similar to the uppercut that Justin Gaethje got caught with in their fight in real life that almost ended him in the first round. I don't remember if it was the lead uppercut that caught him. It might have been the rear uppercut. So I don't want to say for a certainty that that's what it was, but that uppercut does a lot of damage. It really, really does. As well as the pull elbows. The pull elbows for you guys that love, that are my pull elbows outer, pull elbow spamming people out there, Tony Ferguson is for you because them elbows are high level and they do a lot of damage. Well, right here, we're taking our time. Putting the pressure on him. That right leg is chopped. Caught him with a cleanly timed knee. Nicely timed straight. Hurts him again. We can't rush the finish because if we rush, that's when we get caught. So smart pressure. Caught him right there with another cleanly timed straight. Now the shit throws in a ground and pound. Oh, and he rage quits and robs us of the satisfactory victory, bro. I mean, if I was him, I would have quit too. I'm not going to lie. And look at that. Look at that. 49 of 88 strikes. We literally landed over half of our strikes in this round while just absolutely punishing him on the feet. And this is how you have to fight with Tony Ferguson because he doesn't have the power. But if you are able to accurately strike like this right here, you're going to win a lot of fights. You really, really are. So this is how you have to use alter ego Tony Ferguson. Unfortunately, I didn't get to grapple, but like I said, he's not meant to be just spamming takedowns. He's not. He's a, very much in the same way as I would put Nate Diaz. Uh, Nate Diaz would hurt you on the feet to the point where you shot on him, 
And then he would just, you know, he would either sweep you, sub you, punish you on the ground, doing something like that. I mean, obviously, Tony Ferguson does a little bit more ground and pound than Nate Diaz does, but I feel like they're both pretty similar. They want to hurt you on the feet before they get you on the ground or snag up a choke. You know what I'm saying? So that's really how you have to use the alter ego of Tony Ferguson, in my opinion. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think of the alter ego of Tony Ferguson. Do you love him? Do you hate him? Is there things that you would change about him? Or anything like that. Drop a comment in the comment section. But until the next video, guys, take it easy. Be safe. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to slap that subscribe button as well as slap that like button. I do post everything sports content-wise on this channel. But until the next video, guys, take it easy. Be safe. Enjoy the rest of your guys' day, afternoon, evening, depending on where you guys are watching this from. And I will see you guys in the next video.